In today's video, we'll be going over the market crash that just happened this morning. Complete insanity. A lot of people I know panic sold. And if you guys were one of those people that panic sold, let's go over exactly what happened and uh, some of the moves that I did personally myself. So I'm going to keep this live stream to about one hour. So stay tuned. Um, drop some comments in the in the chat here and uh, let's go. Let's get this party started, man. I'm going to update you guys with everything that's been going on with my portfolio and uh, also go over some and analyze some of the stocks that um, I think the three hottest stocks or that's exactly why I purchased them, the three hottest stocks on my portfolio. All right, I'm seeing a lot of people jump into the chat now. What's up, guys? We are going to go into a screen share and um, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did personally. Because I dropped about $20,000 today in the stock market. So, you know, I'm not going to uh, beat around the bush. I bought the dip. And this morning, it dipped so hard. And, like, emotionally, I wanted to panic sell. That's me personally. But being in the markets for so long, like the last three years, I've been in the market. I've experienced the, the biggest crash last year. I've experienced a bunch of corrections throughout that time as well. I'm kind of used to that feeling now, you know, once you have a certain feeling and you get, and it happens to you over and over and over again, you kind of know what to do during those times. So I know a lot of you guys are brand new to the market. So I'm going to give you guys exactly uh, what I did and, um, you know, just give you guys some insight into what other investors do with their portfolios during this time. Okay. So let's jump right into it. Uh, don't forget to drop a like smash the like button. Uh, also, if you guys need some free stocks, links are going to be in the description below. Webull has two free stocks. All right. So this is my portfolio as of today. And uh, I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can have a better view. Portfolio is sitting at $120,000 basically. So this is my margin. All right. I basically dropped $20,000 today and I'm going to tell you exactly what I bought and why I bought them. So on the top right here, yes, I'm still using Robinhood. This brokerage is just way too sticky, man. It's really sticky. And what I mean sticky is just that feeling to not to stop using it. So these are my option contracts. If you guys were wondering, I'm uh, pretty behind in these two. And uh, my plans with these two options, I'm just going to continue to roll them out. What's up, guys? I see you all. You got, I see you guys in the chat. Dominix is here. I see Francis. I see uh, Rainier. I just switched up the chat so that it is uh, in real time. So you guys can uh, just spam, basically spam the uh, chat box in real time. I need a little bit of a wake up here drinking my casual monster. And I know you guys see the Planet Apes, the Planet Ape shirt. Uh, shout out to... I think his name is Yoon and Brian Jung. They hooked me up with a sweater. All right, so let's go over the portfolio really quickly. I, I promoted enough stuff already. I still own 200 shares of GME, and I basically set this as today's return. So I'm down about $540 on this. Alibaba is the first purchase that I made today. All right, so Alibaba, I've been talking about Alibaba for many since uh, mid-January, and I've been buying consistently average cost right now sitting at 260 i bought 10 shares all right guys i bought 10 shares this morning right around this time right around two 244 man let me know if you guys what you guys bought exactly yes we'll be going over starboard value as well all right guys so Portfolio value, this is about 20% of my portfolio. I basically bought 10 shares, averaged my way down. Now my average cost is uh, $260. And um, right now I'm going to try to get to 200 shares of Alibaba. I'm I'm deep. I'm, I'm really long Alibaba. I'm bullish on it. Um, Exxon Mobil, I still own 500 shares. It's been, this is the only stock that's been going up. All right, so let me give you guys my thesis and what I've been seeing in the markets. All right, so a lot of the tech stocks in today has basically crashed, right? So let's go over Finviz. If you guys don't know what Finviz is, um, let me give you guys a link here so you guys can follow along. I like to check this 
basically every day just to see the entire market. Oh, um, I'm going to scroll this to the side so everybody can see what I'm looking at. So this is a snapshot, a heat map of the entire market. All right. And you can see one of the biggest sectors here is technology. Next is communications, financials, and healthcare. And if we look a little bit deeper, we can see like in these sectors, you can uh, see the big players, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and so forth and so on. All right. So this is a quick snapshot of everything. And here's the legend on the bottom. Legend. <laughs> uh, negative three will be uh, deep red. Like Tesla, Tesla was down 2% today. A lot, it was actually down maybe four or five. Um, I, I have to double check that for you guys, but it was deep down a lot. And um, all the, and uh, if we look at the legend here, going across to the right side, uh, the neon green basically is companies that did really well on the day. This is how you read the heat map. There are some days where this entire heat map is red, all right? If you checked out this entire heat map in the morning, so this updates in real time. If you looked at it in the morning, it would have been all red. And for whatever reason, today was a crazy day of mix of volatility, major uh, correction in the morning, and basically everybody just bought the dip, it seems like. <laughs> and uh, we're almost back to normal now. So check this heat map on a daily basis. If you guys kind of want to see if if it's a specific sector that's going on sale or if it's... um the entire market that's going on sale or figure out what is going on within that industry. Um, my M1 finance pie is actually based off of these um, individual sectors here. So in my fin uh, M1 finance pie, I can show you guys that later, but that that is how I like to stay organized and uh, make sure I know what I'm looking at. So uh, to get back around to what I was trying to tell you guys. So a lot of the companies that are, more value type plays like Exxon Mobil and um, let's go back to heat map. So basically, yeah, like uh, AT&T was up a lot today. Uh, financial sector was up a lot today. Technology, a lot of people have been selling out of their growth stocks to basically fund their other investments that has been really sleepy for the last few months. All right. Exxon Mobil is one of those companies that is so undervalued in my opinion that it, it was a matter of time before people would say, hey, I'm going to take my profits here on Tesla, Apple, Google, all that, and put it into something that's undervalued, and let's run this back, all right? That is what basically happened today from what, I, what I'm thinking. So I'm not sure how many of you guys sold, but hopefully you guys didn't panic sell. Panic selling is one of the things that you just do not want to do. I felt like I wanted to panic sell. And uh, when I know I'm about to panic sell, that's when I just turn off the phone, turn off Robinhood and, uh, you know, collect my thoughts and then come back. So if you guys are a newer investor, please do not panic, when, especially when it comes to your money. All right. So again, these are, these are, um, uh, what am I trying to say? These are uh, organized in today's returns. All right. Exxon Mobil, I'm up 300. Gap, I'm up 40. Realty Income, I'm up uh, 56. So a lot of these companies here, they basically have stayed the same. Let's uh, do it by percentage. All right. GME is down 6%. Not very little volume today on GME for whatever reason. But uh, let's uh, go down to Tesla. So Tesla is a new addition to the Robinhood portfolio. And uh, basically, I bought at a little bit of a higher price. I bought in at six eighty nine. I bought ten shares at six eighty nine. This is one of the things that drained my my margin account. So I got to pay that back as soon as possible. So I dropped seven k on Tesla at six eighty nine, and um, currently I'm up about three point six percent. Let me. So I bought the dip on uh, Tesla. I wish I bought closer to. What is it? Two, uh, 620. All right. I wish I bought closer to 620. Like for anybody that has been buying Tesla over the last month or so, let me know what was on your mind when you were buying Tesla at 800, 700 and not buying Tesla at 600. What was on your mind? See, this is a lot. This has a lot to do with psychology. In my opinion, when you see your investments continually just go down and, 
and you don't really know what's going on, you're panicking, you you want to sell because you don't want to lose your entire investments. That is more of a psychological thing where if you're a long-term investor, right? If you're thinking, hey, Tesla, it's, it's not only a car, car company, it's not only an EV company, it's not only a battery company, they're doing a lot, right? They're also a um, uh, full automatic drive, I think that's what it's called, or AI driving company. They're full automation driving. That's what I'm trying to say, full automation driving. There's that type. What are those components worth for Tesla? And I think it's worth a lot more. So I'm not too worried about buying Tesla at, what, 689 I think this was a steal, honestly. And it's it's been a long time coming, and uh, we... I mean, I jumped in at a pretty good time. I told everybody in the Discord in real time, if you guys want to, you know, figure out what I'm doing in real time, the Discord is where it's at. You guys can uh, jump onto the Patreon and uh, you guys will see my buys and sells, which um, I drop all the time. But uh, basically, let's jump back into here. I bought 10 shares here, but this wasn't even the biggest purchase of the day, all right? The biggest purchase of the day was in Peloton, baby, Peloton. And Peloton, I'm already up $1,000. So I got this. Um, I I would not say this was a steal, actually. I think Peloton might continue to, you know, be very volatile. All right. So just be aware, guys. Uh, Peloton right now is sitting at 127 I dropped 100 shares. I bought, I dropped $12,700 for 100 shares of Peloton. This is now almost 8%, over 9%. I mean, almost 8% of my portfolio. I mean, I can't even speak right now. I'm so excited. But total return for today, up $1,000. So, you know, this was a this was a little bit of a gamble. But, you know, I've been researching Peloton for like the last week or so. It's been on the watch list. I'm not sure if I told you guys about it. But I've been, you know, contemplating when was a good time to buy in. And I got it for a steal. I'm already up $1,000. I'm up 9%. All right, so I'm going to jump into the chat. Those are the three stocks, the three hot stocks that I bought during this dip. Let me know what you guys think, and um, I can go over some of the things that you guys uh, want me to look at. So for this next segment of um, this live stream, we've been going for 12 minutes already. Drop a like if you guys haven't. For the next segment of this live stream, I want to basically... Oh, we got true financials in the live stream, man. What's up, True Financials? Um, I've been chatting with True Financials for the last few months here every single Monday. He's a great channel. Go subscribe to him if you guys want to learn some basic tutorials on all these uh, financial stocks we have. But basically, uh, that was a tangent. Uh, But basically, what I want to do was create a watch list where I can actually help um, people in the live stream. Uh, Currently, this is my watch list, all right? This is a gigantic watch list. Way too many stocks. I need to uh, trim this down to maybe the top 10 or top 15. Um, It's really too difficult to keep track of. Right now, I think that was like 25. Um, Before I move into the next segment. Oh, so that is the next segment, all right? I'm going to, you guys give me the best ticker symbols. I'm going to, you know, categorize it by most popular. And I'm going to keep an eye on them. And I'm going to update you guys every single day with uh, what happens with those stocks and what I find interesting about those stocks. All right, that is uh, one segment I want to build out. So um, secondly, let's take a look at uh, Starboard Value. This is a new company that I picked up on Monday. I bought 200 shares. And um, I got, I just want to give you guys my insight on this, all right? Uh, we got a big dono from, I, I can't even pronounce your name, brother. Sorry, the Micro. Sir Johnny Ive, a designer of the iPhone is on CCIV's board, by the way. Apple ties into the Apple car. Wow. I know who Johnny Ives is. Very interesting. That is a very interesting move for CCIV. Um, I know we'll go over CCIV in a bit. That is another SPAC that just um, confirmed their merger with Lucid Motors. But uh, right now, I still want to talk about Starboard Value just for the next few minutes because this is a uh, pretty big investment on my part. And uh, we can go over everything else in a bit later. All right, Starboard Value, I purchased yesterday 200 shares, all right? Guys, I am almost completely maxed out of my capital. I don't know if I told you guys this, but uh, 
I've been saving up for this dip that happened today, all right? And if the market continues to dip, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I basically don't have any more capital to, to put in the markets. But if the markets continue to dip, I, I need to like, I need to find money somehow, some way to, to put back in the markets. Um, all right, so I market value here is still around $2,080. So my thoughts here is I'm still bullish, right? I'm still bullish on the entire stock market. I, I believe later on, maybe within the next week or two weeks, the stimulus check will come out. Um, I'm hearing a lot of news about, you know, basically this pandemic is going to be over relatively soon. All right. As more and more people get vaccinated, I, I believe I, I don't even want to talk about the this as much because I don't want to get demonetized. But I do believe that we are seeing like the end of you know, this pandemic and it's coming a lot faster than we realize. That's why, um, you know, for the last two weeks, I've been looking at uh, Peloton and um, a lot of the perception around Peloton and that company is, it's a, you know, it's a stay at home stock. All right. This is a category of stocks like Netflix, like um, Amazon, like, uh, you know, companies that use like Zoom, like those type of companies, they did not do well over the last week. So, I feel like the perception in the market right now is they're trying to go away from these stay-at-home stocks because they're overvalued. Take that money, put it into undervalued companies like ExxonMobil, like in the companies that are generating revenue, right? Not just really speculative companies. So that's what I'm seeing personally. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you guys are seeing, but uh, let me know if you believe uh, what I'm saying is true. All right, this is, but starboard value is, is gonna be my most speculative play <laughs> at the moment, all right? This is a complete speculative play. I, I don't usually do um, SPACs. This is one of the first SPACs that I actually purchased, all right? So, um, Starboard Value is going to merge with uh, Sistera. Hopefully I pronounced that right. That's a very difficult name to pronounce. And uh, it's been hovering around this $10 range, right? Whenever a SPAC comes out, it's roughly gonna be a $10, um, stock right and it's been hovering roughly at 11 and 10. currently my average cost is at 11. you know i see this potentially this is a good price to get in because this is basically still a spac leveled stock but once the merger is confirmed once everything goes through i feel like this could see maybe a you know this is what i speculating that it could go up to 15 to maybe even 20 dollars, and that's where i'll start to take profits so this is, uh, you know, I'm going to keep an eye on this. This is a, I would say medium risk, media, uh, medium risk, high reward. That's why I'm, I'm in this company and you know, it's $2,000. It's not that much, uh, compared, like if you take a look at the portfolio diversity, it's a very small percentage of my portfolio. So like I said, me, my computer just froze, but, uh, I think everything's still good. So my conviction with starboard value is very low, but I still do think, um, this could still turn into like a 15 to $20 company. Once like, uh, it starts getting picked up on, um, you know, on Reddit, on, uh, on the YouTube community. And, um, that's just my thoughts. All right. Let's jump back into the chat here. I saw a couple donos that, um, I want to acknowledge here. Dominic major player in the live stream here. Hey Dom, I'm going to make you a, uh, man. All right, so Dominic saying OSK won the USPS contract. It is also a strong financial uh, statement. Plus, it also pays a dividend. Yes, dividends are something that I am a big fan of. Getting passive income from my investments into the stock market. So this is a company that I'll be adding to the list here. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I don't like buying companies that are shot up what is this 15% on the day? If you guys got in, if you guys got in early, like if you guys got in around 89, then, you know, this is a good buy, but it's already too late for me. So if you got in early, good job, but definitely this is, um, not a buy for me at the moment. All right. So we have a special guest on the line here. And um, I'm going to bring him in so we can have a quick chat with him. Uh, hopefully, you guys love his content. Andrew Moe is uh, basically here right now. So, All right. 
Andrew, Whoa. welcome to the live stream, buddy. How's it going, everybody in here, out there? Bruce Wayne Gain, and uh, a, a big up for uh, for the kind of live stream uh, etiquette that you guys are uh, are putting on here, Bruce. Thank you for coming on, especially at this time. Um, I think a lot of people are wondering what's going on with the markets right now. Definitely, nice to see you again, man. So, uh, basically, I've been talking to the chat, giving them an update on what I've like I've seen going on and you know, something that resonated with me that uh, we talked about on one of our earlier live streams was um, how you said perception is everything in the market right now, right? Yes. A lot of people are not buying based off of value anymore. They're just thinking like, Hey, what is going to give me the best returns? What are people talking about? I, I think that's good. I'm going to jump into that. Yes. So <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, like that's, that's what's been going through my mind all this time. I'm like, you know, value isn't really a thing anymore. So for the short term, at least, I'll, I'll just see what other people are talking about and, and look into those type of companies for maybe a quick, you know, a quick, uh, a quick play here and there. Um, I think that that's like one of the biggest uh, tropes of the investment world is that like everyone's kind of like lemmings. You're really looking to see uh, which way is is the wind going to blow and wherever it is, you're going to end up uh, burnt if you try to one, catch a loose train. Uh, a couple of stocks actually ended up going up pretty high today. Um, uh, of course, a lot more stocks ended up uh, dipping and, and seeing a huge sell-off. Uh, and, uh, and the other side of it is trying to uh, catch a burning, uh, trying to catch a falling knife is also a big uh, dramatic problem as well, as well as trying to move around a lot, especially in the time of this bubble. We talked a lot about uh, on my live streams today about exactly what is the danger with trying to move around right now, where um, if this is a market correction or if this is um, just yeah. Uh, a big scare uh, by larger institutions. Either way, it doesn't seem like it's quite over just yet. Yeah, I, I truly believe it's going to be very volatile for you know the foreseeable future until something comes out. Like I think after the stimulus check comes out, we'll be cleared for like maybe a, a bit more. But just right now, um, just from the volume that I've seen this morning, the it wasn't much volume, but the price did the price action did move a lot. Um, what 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 have you seen with uh, GME or AMC? Uh, I know you you love covering that on your channel. I do love covering the good old AMC and GME. Uh, so far at market close, AMC is up another fifteen percent on the day. So that's a fifteen percent up from the day before. Uh, I was measuring the different levels of support, uh, technical support and technical resistance, uh, and the stock, the price that I was hoping that uh, AMC was going to burst through today was uh, eight dollars and eight cents. That was a previous level of resistance. Um, so. Not quite yet on the money. We got pretty close, up twenty percent at one point on the day, uh, and uh, and one of the, the the main takeaways on on AMC was that uh, it was still strong even at a uh, market close. Um, it is now tumbled uh four percent after the market uh, and after markets, but before it tumbled, it was doing really well. Uh, it's even as market closed, there was a whale that came in and snapped up a couple of AMCs right before market close. Was there a catalyst that um, uh, for this movement? Because seventeen percent—that's pretty. That's pretty crazy for a day like this. There was yesterday. Uh, the New York governor said that all movie theaters uh, in New York City are going to be able to open at twenty-five percent capacity. That includes AMC. Uh, boosted up a good amount that day, up fifteen percent yesterday, and uh, and today the news keep rolling in. In fact, every single stock on my watch list has been read today. Uh, on the day, except AMC, uh, which was up a crazy amount. Yeah, I never, I did not get into AMC. I just couldn't. Um, I just, yeah, I just couldn't go into AMC because I was already in GME, and I just was. I didn't want to be exposed that much into like the meme stocks. So, GME is the the one that I'm. I have most conviction with. Uh, I'm not. Are you invested in GME as well as AMC uh, in both? I am invested heavily in GME, so I'm a bag holder at oh, ab above 250 uh, when it, the price was coming down. So um, for something that I've seen over the last few weeks with AMC and GME is basically they, they've been pretty, they've been like uh, following each other in terms of price action. And I think today or yesterday, the, it started to differentiate now. 
Like AMC is starting to see bigger movements and uh, GME is basically um, trading flat. I don't know. Have, you seen, about that. have you seen that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah GME uh, had its time in the limelight this time around last week when the GME hearing was about uh, to come out and everybody's testimonies were uh, out in the open. Uh, during the actual hearing, GME rose a crazy uh, 10% as uh, deep effing value. Uh, Roaring Kitty was on the stand. Uh, it quickly lost uh, that uh uh, that momentum uh, and dropped back down lower than when the hearing started. Uh, and uh, and after which uh, GME has just been trading sideways pretty consistently for the rest of the week. And now it seems like uh, after this uh, announcement by New York City, uh, AMC is currently in the spotlight. But the two charts, whereas it was a few days ago, basically identical, have yeah. now diverged pretty significantly. So we're, I'm seeing in the chat, uh, everyone's calling us uh, bag holders and and saying that yeah. we're trying to uh, pump the stock and, and promote it. Guys, we are just, you know, investors in the stock market like everybody else. You know, this is not a financial advice. This is just for entertainment purposes only. We're just telling you guys what we see and just as, honestly, all of our, uh, both of our opinions. Yes. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, I've, I've heard this a lot now that everyone's calling me a bag holder. And yeah, I am a bag holder. I have diamond hands, you know. It's, um, it's the same thing when... um. When Bitcoin dropped to three thousand, people were calling me bag holder, and you know who gets the last laugh? Bitcoin is still <laughs> at like almost fifty thousand. Do you do yeah. you have any thoughts on Bitcoin? I have big thoughts on Bitcoin. I was I was I think Bitcoin was the one that made me the wildest today because it dropped all the way down the the lowest it got today was like forty four. Did it get all the way down there? Like it got crazy low today, forty five. Uh, okay, two hundred. Um, on my chart here, I'm going to put on for the day. I'm gonna, I'll try to look for the lowest. So I see 45. Yeah, that's uh, it. Uh, yeah, 45 seems to be the lowest. And if you if you got in then, oh my goodness. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if Bitcoin is uh, like is done with all its turbulence at the moment. But like um, like Bruce makes a point of Bitcoin is for the long run. Every single finance or YouTuber is pretty darn bullish on Bitcoin because now it has the institutions backing it up. Uh, so if you guys don't have your BlockFi links yet, go ahead and grab it. It's, it's a really good tan. So you're thinking, um, did you, are you investing in Bitcoin at all? Uh, I am waiting for the right time. I have uh, started a BlockFi. <laughs> so oh, I uh, have uh, that. I have my life savings ready to transfer into USD stablecoin. Uh, uh, and when that process is done, I don't have to like wait for an ACH uh, bank statement or transfer to actually buy, snatch up the Bitcoin when it drops down to a, pre a level that I think is going to be uh, like much, way more undervalued than it currently is. Oh man, I just forgot what I was about to ask you. Um, so I've seen a lot of uh, articles now. Yeah, right here, Tesla, they're saying like, <laughs> They're saying a lot of Tesla's price is going down because of Bitcoin, how Bitcoin is uh, going down as well. I don't know. I don't, I'm pretty sure those two are not really tied together. Yes, Tesla does own some Bitcoin. I think they own about $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, but that was when um, Bitcoin was around 50 something dollars, 50,000, 52,000, I think. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on like uh, the Tesla? Because Tesla dropped a lot today as well. And I picked, I Tesla picked up dropped some shares. a huge amount. Um, I, I remember, I yeah, the last live stream, you said that, uh, I think you bought in a little bit. I did. I bought it at 800. Um, it's at 700 now. Uh, the, uh, the, the idea behind Tesla right now is that it is still, it, it's trying to change its trajectory into more of a technology based company, um, which it always has been, but the idea of how, uh, there's Dominic's right there are, are, uh, our, our boy Dominic's here. Um, but uh, the main idea behind Tesla is uh, a video that I'm going to uh, clip from today's live stream about all of the EV stocks, uh, especially CCIV uh, today that's down 40% at, at market close. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, t uh, electric vehicles currently have the, uh, the brunt of the market correction because a lot of the hype over electric vehicles is in the future. It's in promises of exactly what electric uh, vehicles can deliver. Uh, and since it hasn't delivered it yet, 
that is, uh, in a lot of analyst views, and maybe rightfully so, overvaluing the stock. And whichever stock gets overvalued first is the one that gets kicked first. Um, I was on um, Justin O from uh, a couple of cents um, live stream earlier today. And basically what he was saying is, you know, when it comes to these companies like Tesla and um, a lot of these other growth stocks, they, the price is for like 10 years out, 20 years out, 30 years out. It's not for the actual value of that company today. So for anybody that is, you know, more of a long term holder, it's going to be easier for you to, you know, buy into these companies. But if you're trying to, you know, make a quick buck and, and thinking like, oh, it's going to be, it's going to go to the moon. It's going to go to the moon within the next uh, month or next month or so. I think you guys have the wrong mindset when it comes to um, investing into uh, these growth companies right now. Yeah, but I, 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 I wanted to pull up CCIV because I didn't know it was down 40%. I thought it was down like. All right, so it's at 36.76. So I wanted to ask you one question about um, SPACs. Sure. Um, have you been like keeping an eye on like different types of SPACs? Because what I noticed was with a company like uh, Churchill Capital, once they announced that they were going to merge, that's when the price of the SPAC started dropping, right? I think um, they merged, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, something like that. Uh, right. the, the, the big instigator for these SPACs and so far my visibility on SPACs is that, um, a couple of them are on the horizon, especially the 23 and me SPAC, uh, this mm -hmm. one in terms of special acquisitions. And, and, and if people aren't directly aware, if you're trying to IPO as a company, one of the ways is through a special acquisition, a SPAC. Um, and when Churchill, uh, decided that, uh, this was the, the avenue forward, a lot of people thought that it made sense, um, before they announced that the projected uh, first vehicle that they wanted to come out with, the Air, was going to be delayed. So now that that delay has occurred, now that the fact that a lot of people are um, uh, trying to grasp the fact that they haven't made a single vehicle sale yep. and they are still overvalued uh, like a tremendous amount, um, the math added up that this is just one of the biggest pieces of meat on a chopping block when it comes to a market correction. I've, I've seen an article where they said, uh, they expect their first vehicle to come out in 2024 or 2025. Like, if you think about uh, it, like how far away <laughs> is it until they make a vehicle? They they promised uh, their first vehicle to come out the end of this year, second half of this year. Okay. Uh, and they promised half uh, half a million vehicles. Uh, I th yes. So, so a half a million vehicles should be uh, like in a near horizon, but maybe not that near. If you're comparing it with like Tesla, for example, right? The Model 3 goes for like 30, 40 grand, right? This new vehicle coming out is gonna be going for 70 grand before um, the uh, the tax, uh, clean air EV tax break. Uh, even with the tax break, this vehicle is gonna be way too expensive compa in comparison with uh, the models that already exist in terms of EV and in terms of actual non-EV vehicles. And I think everybody should also know like, they they have these like deadlines right that they say they want to do all this stuff but like with tesla we saw it again and again they they always miss their deadline and yeah. i think that like during the volatility of tesla like a few years back those missed deadlines crashed the price of the stock so i'm think i'm thinking like when all of this happens like lucid is going to say oh this deadline we're going to have this many it's not it's not going to be true they're just projecting it and they're going to see a lot of setbacks, I believe, because they're a new company, right? They haven't even made one yeah. car yet. And that's the, and I guess investors that uh, were bullish on Tesla to begin with, right, because it was blazing the trail, are now lo no longer going to fall for the same trick twice. Like, if you don't have a car, get out of the way uh, and, wait, and make room for people who actually do have cars. All right, so it's 6 p.m. now. Market is completely closed. So one question I had for you was, I know uh, we talked a little bit about um, BlockFi. Yeah. Like I'm not affiliated with BlockFi at all, but um, if you guys want to, I think uh, Andrew Mo has a affiliate link, but I, I was wondering if you can explain to me what it is and is it like worth going into? I have a, a meeting. I'm going to meet the guy later tomorrow, I think, just to have a chat with him. But maybe okay. you can like prime me a little bit before I meet him. 
Yes. So uh, I think you're going to talk to Jeremy or one of those two guys, Jack or Jeremy. Uh, BlockFi is the opportunity to essentially own uh, uh, a wallet of cryptocurrencies that you can then gain interest on. And the best part about that is that uh, a lot of the different uh, ways that you can buy crypto nowadays, you can buy it on PayPal. Uh, and that's one. Of, uh, it's really a re like reducing the amount of barriers that you need to get through, right? If it, you can buy it on PayPal, but you can definitely buy it on Webull. You can also buy it on Robinhood. Um, these uh, specific companies that are selling you like shares and pieces of your crypto, you're actually just um, buying it at a slightly worse price. Uh, whenever you buy and selling at a slightly worse price when you sell and you're definitely not making any interest on it um so these are the twofold important pieces of getting a block five account instead may being able to get interest on your uh on good cryptocurrencies that already have institutional buy-in is essentially a an investment that as someone who has been watching the markets closely i think is going to be like a, a lifelong investment uh that's why personally i'm going to start putting all of my uh uh, earthly liquidity uh, assets directly into BlockFi slowly. You can even put it as USD stablecoin in the beginning um, and just wait for the chance to buy a Bitcoin or Ethereum of your choice. I'm just worried because they they seem to be pretty brand new. I think they, they opened back up in uh, 2017 or 2018. And only now they're, they're doing a lot of promotion. You're right. So a lot of these big finance YouTubers... Uh, are pushing out the brand. Uh, BlockFi is new, so you, there is a there is a gap in the amount of of like fine customer service that they can actually provide. Uh, I have fielded uh, like concerns from fans of the show that say sometimes Twitter or or the phone call uh, actually takes a while to get back to you. Um, but uh, if you are concerned about any of those, let us work out the kinks. Uh, let us start putting our life, uh, our precious life savings into BlockFi first, uh, and then we'll tell you exactly how it shapes up. Now, the the, the double-edged sword is that right now it's able to offer these great uh, interest rates, like 8.6% interest, um, uh, because right now it's so scrappy and young. So who knows what will happen if once all of these bugs are worked out, uh, if they're going to change their policies. So, so BlockFi is a brokerage that you can buy and sell Bitcoin on it, right? Right. And then when you have it, you earn interest. And I think that's one of the best uh, best possible ways uh, you can mm -hmm. buy uh, Bitcoin and store Bitcoin nowadays. So I think um, I would assume their biggest competitor right now is going to be Coinbase. And on Coinbase, they don't offer any of that interest rates, but they do offer, you know, different types of cryptocurrency that you can buy. So I, I kind of like how um, you can do the USD, USD coin. Did you? Is that what it is? Yeah, I, stable coins. Stable coin. Yeah, I, I'm not too familiar with stablecoin. I think stablecoin came out right around the time that I stopped, um, you know, keeping an eye on, uh, on, um, crypto, but can you explain a, a stablecoin a little bit more? Sure. The general gist is that it should always be the exact same price as the actual, um, uh, fiat currency that it's based on. So it's based it, off USD. It, okay. Yeah. So if you expect USD to uh, somehow go defunct uh, some sometime in the near future, then you definitely shouldn't invest in stablecoin. <laughs> okay, so it's tied one to one, right? Uh, that is, that is how it's uh, historically behaved, and that's why I have good faith in it as well. So this is uh, see how much you can earn, and um, let's see if you put ten thousand, and when you put it in for. X amount of years, is it locked up or can you just withdraw at any time? Um, you know? If you can, uh, so far as I've been able to use the app, I could use it just like a wallet. Okay. Bring it in, bring it out, um, anything. Do you mind if I, uh, if people who want to start using the link nowadays, I can start sharing my link now if that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, let me send it to you. Should I put it in the chat or should I put it in, uh, send it to you on Insta? Um. If if you guys want the link, just go to uh, Andrew Mo's channel. He'll he'll oh, have nice. it in his description. Do you have a BlockFi video? Uh, I have me signing up on on live stream for BlockFi. Because uh, it's like uh, once I put thing. like um, any links, or if someone puts a link into the chat, I think it gets like like a blocked. Uh, blocked. Let me let me send it to you on Instagram. But yeah, BlockFi seems to be it seems to be really interesting. 
Oh, we have 1,012, uh, 1,200 people in here. Welcome guys. We are uh, looking into one of these new brokerages, uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency, um, go give Andrew a, uh, if you guys are interested, um, that is, uh, Andrew's link. He just explained exactly what BlockFi was. Thank you for that. And, uh, hopefully you get rewarded for that too. So if, um, so this is borrow money at rates as low as 4.5. So you can borrow money too. Okay. You don't have to sell your crypto to get cash at BlockFi. We let you borrow funds against your crypto assets so you can get a loan. 4.5 is kind of pretty high when it comes, yeah. but it is a crypto asset. So it's more volatile. Exactly. Buying on margin is always uh, a tricky play. Uh, and uh, and you should only try to, to borrow money you don't have and invest it if you uh, actually know what you're doing. Yep. That's a, that's that would be a stretch still a little bit, <laughs> right? <laughs> People can still lose a lot of money doing it that way. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, yeah, this is pretty interesting. I can't wait to uh, meet the guy tomorrow and talk about this. Uh, I was trying to, I was watching you with a different guest. Um, yes. The, the day or two ago, but I couldn't click on his link. Uh, was that, was that Brian on your channel? So, uh, it was yesterday. We had a epic, uh, yeah, after you were on yesterday's uh, live stream as well, but, um, Brian, he jumped on a little bit after, and, uh, we were talking a lot about NFTs and, um, Humphrey Yang was also on the TikTok oh, yeah. master. <laughs> so yeah, it was a pretty fun live stream. We went for like three hours talking about basically a little bit of everything. I love that. This is just like little talkbacks, uh, like small ecosystems where you can just like chill and I mean, I like, this is, I like to have, have you ever seen Joe Rogan's podcast? I've, I've, uh, obviously I know about the, uh, Elon Musk meme, right? Uh, I think if I watch a single one of his podcasts, I would probably start with that one. So like I watch a lot of him. So I, I like that vibe where, you know, people can come into my live stream and we can have a conversation about, you know, investment topics. And like, if I have a question that I don't know something I ask you, or if you have a question you would ask me. And, you know, like my concerns and everything, it's going to be pretty in line with a lot of uh, things that my audience is going to also be concerned about. So I think, you know, they're living through me talking to, you know, other experts or in uh, influencers that have experience in uh, this field. I like that. That's actually a really a dope uh, way to go about it. How did you uh, start your investment journey? I've always been curious. So let's see. So, you know, I've been working like a lot of odd jobs ever since I was, you know, in high school, like even before high school, my, my parents have a family business, a supermarket, and I was work, like, working as like a bag boy ever since I was like 12. So I've always had like a entrepreneurial background, always working and saving money. I knew like I always want to buy something big. So throughout that time, I've just been saving up, saving up, saving up. Um, I moved to Cambodia for a while. For like five yeah. years. So I lived from like when I was 24 until 29. So I was there f until that age. And when I came back and I lived, started living in America again, I was like, all right, it's time to invest in real estate. And I just bought my first duplex. I was like, all right, I think this real estate is where it's at. Bought a duplex. And then I did it again the next year. And like, I, I'm able to live off of like those, those real estate investments now. And uh, that's where my channel started. So I, I taught people like, Hey, this is how I did it, how I, uh, you know, invest in real estate and I'm living off of, you know, the income that's I'm bringing in every single month. And then I started to do other investments and, you know, I always share my experience with everybody else. So that's how I got into, um, stocks after real estate. So you started with real estate. Do you still, do you still dabble in that? Yeah. So I manage, uh, all my own properties still, which is something, um, wow. I think I need to, uh, offload because running like a YouTube business and the real estate, it's, you know, I'm doing like really odd jobs. Like, uh, earlier today I had to go shovel some snow because oh. I got like a, a letter from the city that said that, uh, the sidewalk has to be sh uh, shoveled or I'm going to get fined $300 every single day if it's not shoveled. So it's wow. like little odd stuff like that, that I shouldn't be bothered, bothered, bothered with. And uh, <laughs> so it's still like a pain 
but you know, you do what you got to do to, you know, hustle. Uh, what do you think about like other people or like starting a course that helps people like follow your path and, uh, and learn how to become like a business person that builds a brand? I feel like that's something that people are always curious about. I feel like, um, a small, a small minority of my audience is interested in like, um, uh, building a brand and like building up a YouTube channel. It's very niche. It's very niche, even though like, I think everybody should do it. Um, but the one thing that's keeping me not from doing it is like, it's a, it's a big time commitment to create a course. Right. Yeah. And, um, that's number one. Number two is I, I still feel like I'm not that qualified to do it. Oh. <laughs> you know, like I have a little bit of an imposter syndrome. I think that's why. And uh, number three, you know, once you go that route, like there's no turning back. You're like a guru for life now. And like right. you have like that guru tag where it's it's a little bit sticky, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, Ty Lopez, yeah. um, Dan Loke. Dan it's like Loke, a lot of right. good and bad comes with uh, doing it that way. I, I think that, I think that that's that? like, I think that that's like important uh, caveat when it comes to uh, actually building out brands. Because if, if it turns out that um, like you wanted to educate and then you can't shake that guru tag, uh, even if you're trying to like do something else with your life later, uh, that is, it is one of the, the traps you can fall into as an educator, right? Um, you could either build a course uh, entirely free on YouTube uh, and people in tech have, ch have done that time and time again. People in finance have done that time and time again. Um, and, and that seems to uh, stick the not, not a guru, but just a YouTuber tag right on top. So you're going to be creating a course for free? Is that it? it? If, if, if you do, you can escape the guru tag because you never asked a single person to pay for that course. Um, uh, and I think that that's a different path to go down, right? You could try and have have YouTube pay for the course in terms of ad revenue and in terms of affiliate links and sponsorships. Yeah, I feel like uh, that's what I've been doing. Like every single one of my videos previously to like all these live streams was like a very um, a condensed course where it's like on one topic. But now like I'm doing live streams, it's a little bit more casual, a little bit easier and uh, less stressful. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I, I've tried so hard to adhere to the strict deadlines back when I was trying to do a 30 day challenge. I was trying to do like a video every single day and they were like scripted, like topic based on like research. And every single day I had to make pump out a, like a 10 minute video. That was rough. You, you got to batch it. You got to batch, batch it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just do, I tried doing it every single day. I can't do it. It's like meal prep. You got to be like uh, the celery goes in this box and the, and the scripts go in this box. But one, one thing I want to ask you is how, how do you, put out so much content. Do you oh. have an editor? No, I don't. It's all self-taught. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I picked up premiere one day. I was like, this is terrible, but I guess it'll, it'll work. Um, and, uh, and the, uh, the, when I was back doing the third day challenge, I had, uh, my best friend and roommate Hector, uh, he was the one that was really helping me like clean up the videos to begin with. And then I would add all the special effects. Um, so, beyond uh, scripting, filming, uh, and then finishing the, the final product, I did have a lot of help from uh, a good friend of mine. So there you go. So we we're, we got a little bit off track here with uh, yeah. some YouTube YouTuber talk. Sorry about that, guys. We, uh, you know, we this is like, we, we live this. So it's like, it's in us now. But the three hot stocks, I don't know um, if Andrew, if you caught that in my video um, from earlier, like the beginning of this video. But the three hot stocks for the t from the title for everybody else as well, it's uh, Tesla, Peloton, and um, I also added 10 shares of Alibaba. So if you guys got any of those on the, I call it a dip, what happened this morning. I'm not sure if you would consider that a dip, Andrew, but uh, I, I thought it was a dip and I thought it was a good time to, you know, just throw a little bit more money in that I had. And um, that is exactly what uh, I bought. I'm going to abstain from uh, labeling it either a market correction or just a, a, a flash sale. Uh, flash sale. Um, but uh, at, the, at the same time, this is not the first day this has happened this week, right? Monday started off very similar. Um, obviously, not everything was read across the board, but 
uh, a six percent dip now has transformed into a lot of different companies, especially the cannabis sector, into ten percent, fifteen percent dips. So this is a uh, if it's if this was all that there was, um, great. A lot of analysts were saying that uh, some stocks were twenty percent overpriced. Some of them got a twenty percent haircut. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is more to come, you would be in grave danger trying to invest right now. Which is why always uh, remember never invest more than you're willing to lose. So. Um, I didn't learn that lesson, but I dropped twenty thousand dollars today in the market. Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, if it does, you know, I I'm okay. I'm I'm definitely okay. I still have money saved up, just not as much as uh, before. I dropped twenty thousand hmm. dollars. All right, so uh, let's jump into the chat really quickly. Uh, we have one thousand people watching us. Please, guys, drop a like for this video if you guys are finding it informative and uh, we have Andrew Mo here dropping big brain knowledge on everybody as well if you guys have any questions for Andrew Mo you can also find him on his channel um, I'll link it later in the um, in the description of this video or you can just uh, go check him out there's only one Andrew Mo out there only one Andrew Mo out there well there's a couple but they're uh, I, I'm now slightly larger than them <laughs> All right, so we have a super chat. Let's go. Thank you for the dono. You have to go look at Twitter. Uh, it will make your day. Hmm. I, I don't know, man. I feel like you're baiting me right now. I horse. Um, should I do this, Andrew? Um, I'll look at it off screen. <laughs> Be careful. And, uh, and I'll, I'll let you guys know. Maybe, Andrew, you can take over for a bit. Uh, I'm going to sure. look at this off screen really quickly. Uh, well, yeah, last time I don't, so when I was watching the stream and I was like, Brian and Bruce are talking about, uh, sports. I was like, I hope this is Brian. Cause I actually don't really know. I can't really recognize him if it's not on his channel. Um, and, uh, and when you guys were talking about real sports, I was like, darn, it's been a long time since I've seen like an actual live sports game, uh, in Chicago, uh, go, uh, go bears, obviously go bulls. And uh, and Cubs versus Sox. Uh, I was in Hyde Park for a long time, so Sox is a little bit closer to my heart. But honestly, uh, Cubs uh, winning the World Series this uh, like recently is a big part of my uh, of my heart as well. Um, that's all. I, that's all the sports knowledge that I have. Uh, do you Andrew, I thought you're from uh, of the Bay Area. I am not. I moved to the Bay Area to to work, but I'm from Chicago. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So um, it was not a um, <laughs> the the Twitter account was real. I would say, good. Um, I whore do I don't know if you know this guy. <laughs> See real time short interest. So I think Andrew would know a lot more about like the short interest and short squeeze from a data scientist perspective. So the short squeeze on Tesla has been, uh, you know. A, a Nostradamus level of it's going to happen soon for a very long time. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with, uh, with shorts generally, it's uh, the opposite of holding a long position. Uh, it's just, just, just imagine buying a stock and then the opposite of version of that. You're hoping that mm -hmm. the stock value goes down. Uh, and, uh, and whereas a long position, regular buying of a stock means that you could lose uh, all of the money you put into that stock, but no more. A short position is that you could lose up to infinity money in case the price of the stock goes up to infinity, right? So that is the main uh, risk reward ratio for a stock. For companies like AMC that was projected to run out of liquidity uh, at, by uh, this time, 2021, um, a lot of the hedge funds decided to prey upon it and short it so that if it does go bankrupt, they make a ton of money. Um, unfortunately, AMC decided to not go bankrupt, and that is where the short squeeze started. If a lot of people decide uh, that the shorts are not being covered, so a lot of people have promised a lot of other people uh, stocks that don't exist, uh, we can try and increase the price of the stock so that we the shorts get increasingly harder to cover. If that doesn't make sense, I have so many uh, different videos on my channel talking about dog food and exactly what... Uh, Oh, an easy to understand for dummies version of what a short squeeze actually is. So you were talking about the short squeeze that could still potentially happen with AMC. Is that it? Yeah. So FINRA okay. report back uh, a few weeks ago now uh, put AMC up at 15% short. 
uh, float percent, which means that um, right now, uh, if you compare it to like Volkswagen from uh, 08, uh, that squeezed a ridiculous amount, but it was only a 12%, uh, it's very comparable, these two numbers, right? Anything above 10 is going to be in the squeeze worthy range. Now, the same report that came out for GameStop was at 78%. So imagine uh, mm. the amount of shorts that were uh, not covered yet uh, for AMC. There is roughly six times as much in GameStop. So basically, um, what's this guy's name? Brandon. He's letting us know uh, that this guy is spreading some information about uh, short interest from a bunch of different companies here. And uh, we just talked about AMC. Short interest is roughly around 17%. And uh, yeah, GME is roughly around, from three hours ago, around 40. I mean, 25.82% from the S3 SI percentage float. Yeah, I feel like um, the GME trend is, is slowing down a lot. Over, the, I thought Monday it would reach 100 after what happened with uh, Deep Value and how he doubled down his position, but... For whatever reason, um, it did not move the way everybody thought it would. I think that, so one of the big methods of actually like uh, ruining a stock's momentum is with the FOMO method, right? So institutions could do this, uh, YouTubers can accidentally do this. But uh, when I was covering a uh, GME nonstop for the last couple of days, probably was good for it. Uh, but as soon as I started covering AMC as well, uh, that became uh, another stock that people could sink their their money into instead of GME. So uh, in that sense, some of the commenters got rightfully angry that if you stop covering GME, uh, it's kind of like when you stop believing in someone, they stop existing, like uh, like a religion or uh, <laughs> <laughs> or an imaginary friend. Uh, that is the same for momentum when it comes to stocks. Yeah, I think a lot of the people that have already lost out money on like GME, AMC, the weed stocks. They're, they're really lost right now. <laughs> and um, I think that's another reason why the market's been, uh, uh, you know, they, they've shaken out a lot of these like paper hand people, a, a lot of the, the loose, loose leaf guys that, you know, did, they really don't know what they're doing. So that's, I think this morning was really good for, for the market overall. Uh, definitely a lot of, of stocks are now on a heavy discount. Uh, I'm not too happy that uh, my three shares of Tesla uh, I bought it 800. Uh, I didn't foresee that Tesla was going to uh, go ahead and do another 10% dip. Um, but it could have stayed at 620, which would have been a lot worse than where it is now. Uh, I only wish that I bought at 620. That would have been really cool. I mean, what um, was it like a psychological thing or did you not just weren't paying attention to it? Like, why did you not like uh, buy it? Uh, it was because I was live streaming. And this is my oh, excuse for, the, for uh, almost every time I, I end miss up <laughs> missing out on Bitcoin, I end up missing out on Tesla, miss out on like on everything because I was like, oh man, I'm live streaming. How do I buy this right now? I'm just going to buy it from now on, even if I'm live streaming. I would, um, what I do is I know like with a uh, Robin Hood, like if I, if I did a buy right now, it would like show my email address and show like how many letters on my, on my password. I would just buy it on my phone and I'll just oh. leave the screen up. So you can do that. That is a good. That is a good idea. Yeah. Here's Dominic's. What's up? Dominic's always uh, trying to make the most of his dono. The thing yeah. with the uh, Volkswagen is that 12% SI was the outstanding shares in 2008. Uh, Porsche raised their stake up to 74%, leaving the float to. God. I, ha I had a feeling that Dominic's was going to say this. Uh, leaving the float to become 1%. So from 12 all the way outstanding shares. That makes a short percentage of float ratio to 120, 1,280%. Yeah, that's a really important point that uh, when people simplify the, the, the connection between Volkswagen uh, and and what's happening now with GameStop and AMC, it's not that simple. Uh, uh, I'm glad that I'm, I get to wear his, his face on my shirt because Dominic's is a big guy. This is you, right, Dominic's? This is who, this is who you are? Uh, <laughs> I honestly like uh, that just went over my head. It was like a bunch of like percentages and more so it was because um, uh, when Volkswagen closed, uh, Porsche and uh, the, the German government had a big uh, play uh, in getting the uh, company back uh, on uh, on a specific track either way that the company, uh, the specific government wanted. So a lot of mumbo jumbo aside, it is difficult to compare 
uh, Volkswagen, which happened in 08, to what's happening now in AMC and GME. All right. I mean, I don't know too much about um, the Volkswagen squeeze other than like it was compared a lot to GME over the last like month. And um, basically everybody in GameStop was thinking that it would happen exactly like uh, Volkswagen happened. But, um, you know, Volkswagen, I mean, uh, GME only reached 400 at its um, highest price range until Robinhood stopped them or a lot of the other brokers stopped as well. Uh, let's jump into the chat. What's up, chat? What's up, chat? This is probably going to be my last uh, minute and a half because uh, I have someone coming to fix the AC. <laughs> so that's coming. That's going to happen in about ten, two to three minutes. All right. So we got um, 1,200 people in here. What's up, guys? Andrew Moe is here as well. He has three minutes, so make the best out of this. If you guys have a question to ask, you can ask him right now before he leaves. Maybe he can uh, answer a good question. GME, it does seem like it's a split in the room. A lot of people are saying GME's dead, and uh, the other half is saying GME's not over. For me, I'm I'm neither, or I'm really neither. I'm right right down the middle. That's when you can, a, when you can hold a diplomatic position to have. Yeah, when you can hold, and like it doesn't matter, you're fine. I heard news it, of GME that um, today they are looking for a new uh, CFO. They, oh. for their uh, transition or transformation of their business. If you think about it, if people, if the rumors of like, uh, well, not the rumors, but like if the interpretation of GameStop that is just like uh, a place where you sell your old games and then buy used games is the actual, is the all encompassing description of what GameStop's actual business is, then why would they need a brand new CTO, an ex Amazonian? Why would they need to look for a CFO if uh, if your news is uh, yeah. is in the works right now? Like they clearly care about the next part of their technology, the next part of their infrastructure. Uh, and no matter what, they are sitting on a lot of uh, delicious, valuable uh, assets as well as tendies. I mean, they 100%, we know that they're going to change into an e-commerce type of business, right? Like that is what Ryan Cohen's specialty is with, and we saw it with Chewy. And I think yeah. he, he should be able to replicate the same thing with GameStop. So, I mean, for a long-term investor into GME, depending on what price you got in, like um, you should be okay. I agree. Or we have um, a... CFO retired because he didn't sell at 300. <laughs> Get out of here, Kevin. CFO retired didn't sell at 300. Oh, man. Uh, I am going to jet. I see a couple of people asking in the live stream uh, what, where my YouTube channel is. Uh, hopefully, you can put it in the description. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys want to search Andrew Mo or Andrew Mo Money, uh, you guys should be able to see me in the search uh, from YouTube as well. I appreciate uh, Bruce having me as always. And, uh, and I'll just talk to you later, bro. All right, see you, Andrew. Go give Andrew some love on his channel, guys. And uh, we will it. see you again next time, man. Thanks for stopping by. See you guys. Bye. All right, thanks, Andrew, for jumping by. That guy is big brain. If you guys are wanting a data scientist perspective on the stock market, he is uh, definitely um, the only data scientist that I know. So, uh, we are going back into the chat. We've been live for one hour, guys. Um, you know, we already went over, you know, the stock market crash and why I think it wasn't a giant crash. All right. It was like a little bit of a dip and uh, why I thought that happened. Um, secondly, we went over the three stocks that I think were really hot today. If you were able to buy in, um, like Andrew said, and like many other um, of the people that I've been following. Um, I want to say we, if you bought in this morning, you know, a lot of people are saying it was like a 20% discount. Um, I'm seeing in the chat that, um, people are talking about Brian going live right now. Kevin is saying Brian is live. Uh, yo, Brian is alive. Oh, he's alive. Yes, he's live. He was on last, uh, he was on yesterday's live stream and we went over a lot of stuff. If you guys are missing Brian, go check out the last live stream. Uh, he'll give you a quick update of exactly um, his trip from his trip from the mountains. Dow Futures on bloodbath alert. 
That is not good. Anthony, welcome to the live stream. So, you know, I, I'm not ex, ex, that experienced with like uh, reading um, CBOE futures, but, you know, we can definitely. So Andrew has, uh, not Andrew, Anthony. Anthony, um, he just dropped us some uh, pre-market futures. So this could potentially be what happens tomorrow in the stock market. Um, let's see, Dow futures down 55 points. S&P futures down about almost 10 points. NASDAQ futures down about 50 points. It's, uh, you know, it's, it is red, but, you know, I'm not too, not too worried. <clears throat> You know, we, there's still a lot of love for the meme stocks. The meme stocks, in my opinion, are in recovery mode, basically in recovery mode. If you guys can wait out, wait out the storm, wait out like, uh, you know, the sideways action, definitely um, those companies, right? We're not just buying the stock, though they're companies, they have employees, they have a, a board, um, they're in recovery mode, guys. So we have, wow, I'm not sure why there's so many people in here. We got almost 1,200 people, 350 likes. Drop, smash that like button, guys. Uh, Palantir. Palantir was a company that I've been keeping an eye on. I just did not, did not jump into that one. PLTR. Palantir Technologies. Again, I, I know um, I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert when it comes to Palantir. I know they I think they are a data mining company, I believe. Very similar to, um, let's see. Engages in development of data integration and software solutions. What a mouthful. So Palantir, you know, it's a company where there's a, a lot of long-term potential gains. But, you know, look at this stock market, stock market cap. 46 billion, All right, How much bigger can it grow? All right, we got a uh, Morningstar report on here. Fair value of 24%. So that's at least one analyst review. And uh, currently, price is sitting at $26. So it's potentially roughly around its fair value. And uh, if we take a look at the month, it is down 25%. So take it for what it is. I'm not going into Palantir right now until it's like maybe heavily, heavily discounted. You are you guys are spamming that chat. Let's go. Brian Jung. You can jump on anytime, man. What's up, Brian? We are going over a lot of we've already went over GME and everything. GME has been trading so flat. Like it's it's like the same old story happening again and again and again. You can only say the same thing about GME so many times before you kind of have to move on. So I might be one of the rare guys that are really uh, seeing green on today. <laughs> We're up 0.28%. Let me know if you guys are up today. If you guys are down, just spam the chat. I kind of want to see uh, gauge where, where everybody's at with that. If you guys are up big, let me know. And uh, again, don't lie. All right. There's really no, no reason to lie here. And uh, in the meantime, I will be going into... Uh, Wall Street bets. Let's see if uh, I like it. I like to see if uh, Deep Value posted anything today. He's the only person I come back to Wall Street bets for. We got somebody that's down. Ooh. Yoon Ping is up 15%. Let's go. Dom up 8%. Let's go. It seems to be pretty mixed. Some people in red, some people in green. Uh, blue, uh, green. I was going to say blue. What the hell? We have eToro that's down. That's why I like to be diversified a bit in the brokerages. I have the Robinhood account. I have the Webull account, the M1 Finance account. And in between all of those, it's going to be hard for everything to be. Uh, damn, Lewis. RIP to your portfolio down 90%. What are you buying, bro? All right. So you guys can uh, see for yourselves. Like everybody is, uh, it seems pretty mixed. Um, definitely do not panic. 
I'm pretty sure it's not a time to panic when it comes to the stock market and um, what it happened today. For anybody that's brand new into the markets, remember guys, this market is going to be very volatile from here on out. Make sure if you're invested right now, make sure the companies that you're invested in, you have a high conviction. Or if you don't have a high conviction, make sure you have like a fat, you know, like cash reserve. So, you know, you can buy some dips here and there, or you can withstand the, the volatility and the red days. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do a quick glance here to see if um, there's anything that is brand new that's well worth looking into. So, um, so one thing with Conan O'Brien, okay, guys, I finally caved and bought stock in GME. Wish me luck. Can Conan O'Brien, the comedian, help turn us around? Let's go, Conan. Welcome to the team. Guys, I'm not promoting GME. I'm just a guy talking about it. Let's go up 28%. I bought seven. I bought 700 Tesla calls when the price was 640. Let's go. RK, you must be one of the smartest in the bunch. I personally did not want to. Um, damn, that was actually a really good idea. So for anybody that just jumped into the chat, we're talking about um, some of the companies that we are up and down on. Tesla was one of those that I was bullish on. And um, today's dip, man, once it hit 600, I was like, man, how much further can it go? I had to I had to get in as fast as I could. And it took me a few minutes. I got in at 689 for 10 shares. I went into margin buying it. And, uh, you know, that's the end of the story. I'm up almost 4% now. If today was actually a good, this morning, if you guys were not invested at all, this morning would have been one of the best times to get in. You know, I'm in a lot of uh, investment chats, investment discords, and uh, ooh, got a dono. Thoughts on TRCH. I will throw TRCH onto uh, here if you guys want to see, but I've never heard of this stock. Um, oh, what a surprise. It is actually down 10% today. Typically, whenever anybody asks me to look at a company, it's going to be up like 10, 20, 30%. So <clears throat> man, I'm getting hiccups. So on the month, it's still up 56%. Um, it looks like it was a penny stock. Yep, it is a penny stock. I don't invest into penny stocks. Currently, it is uh, $3 market cap. I don't buy anything under a billion dollar market cap. All right, so these are some of the you know, attributes of a company that I look for. All right. So if you are looking into a company that's worth less than a billion dollars, you have to know that that company could probably just go out of business very easily. You know, running a company on the, that's on the stock exchange, it's no bueno, not easy at all. All right. So, you know, from my experience, guys, stick to Higher market cap companies, minimum at minimum one billion dollars. If you're looking into a company that, you know, some people have more than four hundred million dollars. Think about that. All right, you don't know. There's no track record here. All right, like this company, like I could be completely wrong in ten years from now. Torchlight could be one of the biggest companies on the stock market, but you know, mo like if we think about the chances, the chances are that is not. <clears throat> All right, so we have another dono. What's up? We went over CCIV a bit. No plans investing in CCIV. If not, why not? So CCIV, you know, I went over it myself and with Andrew many times over these last few weeks. CCIV, you know, this price is a lot more... Um, attractive than last week's price at least so if you guys got in at 64 dollars, i don't know i cannot buy a company with no revenue all right cciv is just pure speculation previously before the lucid um, merger agreement but they are you know it is confirmed that they're going to merge together and um you know a lot of people took profits here already all right it's, uh, you know, this is going to happen many times over and over again. It's called buy the rumor, sell the news. 
So buying the rumor was basically the rumor of Lucid and CCIV going to be merging together. People did do that over the last three months, I would say. You know, uh, uh, Churchill Capital is a SPAC, so it came out at 10 bucks. The rumor, buy the rumor, buy the rumor, buy the rumor. All right, February 11th, and bam, uh, the news broke out at 57 that they're going to merge, and boom, everybody sold sold the news. So when the news came out, all right, people took profits, and you're going to see this, all right, if you're brand new to the stock market, listen to me, you're going to see this happen again and again and again. It's called buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, so for all you momentum traders, that is my tip for you guys. Um, if you are down a lot on CCIV, you know, don't, don't feel bad. You know, that's called FOMO. What you just FOMO into it, just learn from it and, um, you know, run it back, run it back. CCIV should be roughly, you know, I can't do the valuation right now, but they don't have any revenue. All right. They, they don't plan to make a car until 2024, I believe. So you know, one of the guys in my Discord is Dom, and he does this the best. Buy the rumors, sell the news. That is the key. If you guys come join us in the Discord, this is the Discord here. I'll drop a link for you guys. And uh, you guys can talk to our buy the news, I mean, buy the rumors, sell the news guy. He literally tells us exactly what he's doing it before we do it. And and that's what I appreciate about my Discord and, um, you know, myself. I really do put my uh, money where my mouth is. I have been long on PSEC for its dividend, but I have been rewarded with fantastic capital gains. So guys, PSEC has been in my portfolio for years, right? Two years. I unfortunately had to sell out of it, but you know, a lot of people that have, uh, that's been long on PSEC kept it and they've been rewarded very, very nicely. So one of the reasons why um, I was interested in PSEC to begin with was I didn't believe that there were a recovery stock, but it is a recovery stock. Um, I sold, you know, I can even show you when I sold. I've been collecting at 500 shares. I sold at uh, $5.48. If I just kept it, I would have gained, what is 500 times $2? I would have gained uh, roughly 1000 bucks there, right? Am I doing math right? Yeah, I would have gained 1000 bucks, And I would have continued to collect roughly, you know, 30 bucks every single month. Uh, PSEC is a monthly paying dividend stock. If you guys are in it for the income, all right, income, 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 income. So quick, quick plug for my portfolio here. Um, I haven't updated this after my purchases of today, but this is, would be maybe $220,000. This is my income right here. I'm going to see $500, $5,000 every single year from this portfolio. All right. I don't have to do anything. This is my money working for me. And that is what I preach on my channel. Make your money work for you. I do that in real estate and I do that with my stock portfolio. If you guys are interested in that, subscribe. And you know, I talk about this all the time. So we are seeing a, uh, you know, we got tw 1200 people in here. Drop a like for the knowledge that I'm dropping on you guys. It is very easy to do what I'm doing. It just takes time. If you look back on some of my older videos from two years ago, you can see that I started near zero. I think I started with like a 100, 200 bucks. That's when I started my Robin Hood challenge. So I started near zero and, you know, over time, you know, with luck from the markets, uh, we are here today. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you for the donos. Thank you for the likes. We got Patrick Ma. What's up, man? What ETFs would you put in uh, during the dip? So one ETF that I've been looking at, was ARK Invest, right? ARK. But uh, this one, during this time right now, I don't think it's a really good time to jump into such a, a, a stock that's been taking a big hit. But if you guys are interested in like growth plays, ARK has to be there. If you guys want a long, long-term play, ARK has been um, you know, doing pretty well over the last three months, over the last year, 150. For anybody that's really, really young, I think ARK is going to be where it's at. But uh, the S&P 500, the VOO, or the SPY, these are the ETFs that, you know, without a doubt, I can just throw money into this all the time. I think uh, on my uh, Roth IRA, I threw in an, an, uh, another 6000 to 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 fill to max it out. 
And a lot of that went into uh, VOO. So we got a dono. Thank you. Uh, what are your thoughts on SOS? Let's jump into SOS. Uh, I'll add this to the watch list for you guys. Um, add it to the list here. All right, it's in the watch list. SOS, is this a penny stock? The first question I'm going to ask myself every time, is this a penny stock? Because I don't buy penny stocks. So, you know, let's see. One year ago, it was, it was a penny stock. Ooh, what kind of graph is this, man? What kind of graph is this? SOS Limited. Um, it IPO'd at $66.50 and basically almost went bankrupt. <laughs> and uh, now it's seeing a, a little bounce here in the last month. Up 267%. Market cap, $250 million. Guys, I told you this is one of my... This is one of my biggest pet peeves. A company that's under a billion dollar market cap is a Chinese company as well. Very difficult to invest in something like this. Holding uh, is a holding company which provides marketing data, technology, and solutions. That just, I don't even understand that type of uh, business model. So I would have to deny. I don't like the stock. I don't like the stock. GME, I like the stock. SOS, I don't like the stock. Sorry to say, man. Thank you for the super chat. Let's go. Thoughts on THCB. It blew up because of OSK today. Um, honestly, I do not know any of those ticker symbols, but uh, definitely I can take a quick peek into this company and see what it's all about. We'll take a look at, uh, you know, answer a few more questions. Tuscan Holdings. Is this having to do anything with Tuscan's Kitchen? Still market cap under a billion dollars. Dude, you guys got to do a little bit more due diligence on the companies that you're looking at. But um, on the day, like I said, I don't buy into companies at all time highs. So whenever I see a company shooting up 20%, that's something I try to stay away from. I don't like to FOMO. All right. That's one thing I see a lot of you guys fall for the FOMO, the FOMO, the FOMO. FOMO means fear of missing out. All right. You, you see a company, a stock price or stock, whatever company jump 10%. Oh, it's up 10%. It's going to be easy. It's easy money right there. You jump in, boom, stock market, uh, that, that stock crashes. You know, this is, I'm speaking generally, right? So I like to, you know, value, I like to value a company based off of, Sorry, you know, I'm not sure about that. Come on, Alexa, you still listening on me? Um, yeah, Alexa's interrupting us right now, but let's see. Sorry to say, Tuscan Kitchen, I'm just not a fan of the stock. I don't like the stock. Do you have multiple Roth IRAs? I have um, multiple. No, I do not have multiple Roth IRAs. I have one Roth IRA. Um, I'm planning on opening one for my wife and for my kid. So, you know, I'm still working on that. Uh, thank you for the dono. My Roth IRA is on my M1 Finance portfolio. So this is, uh, you know... My M1 Finance account is in the links in the description. I can show you exactly my update with this. I was going to make a dedicated video to this, so uh, definitely stay tuned to uh, the channel if you guys are interested. Here it is. M1 Finance is a brokerage that um, I recommend for, you know, if you guys want to try something out different than Robinhood. Um, this is my portfolio. I just dropped in um, 4000 today into this portfolio just to buy the dips. And uh, if we jump into my Roth IRA, here we go. This is at sitting at 22,000. And um, if we look at my cash, cash balance here is sitting at 6,000. So this will be in implemented tomorrow. And um, this is my Roth IRA. If you guys are 18 years old, please look into opening a Roth IRA. When you're 60, you'll thank me, all right? You'll come back in 40 years and you'll say, thanks, Bruce. Um, I can't believe I didn't know anything about a Roth IRA and I wish I opened up one sooner because you would be a millionaire at least by then. What is the deal with Dogecoin? So yesterday we saw the first of uh, many volatility, volatile cryptocurrency movements Guys, I've been invested in crypto now for four years, all right? I've been invested in crypto for basically four years. I am so used 
to crypto just doing nonsense, right? Complete nonsense. If you're going to be buying Doge, don't complain to me that you're losing money, all right? I had to talk my grandparents, not my, I had to talk my uncles, my aunts, friends, please don't gamble. Like if you want to gamble money that you can lose, all right, do what you got to do. Dogecoin, maybe, maybe not. I personally, my gamble limit was 30 bucks for this. I put in a 30, I already, already profited. I took out my 30 and I'm still up, uh, look, $5, 30%. So I'm just playing with house money right now. I don't care where this goes. If you, if you're willing to lose any money and you want to throw it in Doge, go, go right ahead. But this is something, you know, I'm not going to throw in uh, heavy cash amounts. I know meet Kevin did. I think he threw in like 30,000 a few weeks ago, but you know, Doge is going to do this. All right. Every single time, um, Elon Musk tweets about it, it's going to pump a little bit. I believe, um, every single time, you know, a, a big influencer, you know, let's say if PewDiePie said he's going to buy a million dollars worth of Doge. Doge is going to pump. So just be, just really be careful about that. If you can get in early, um, you know, that's, if you got in, in January, you know, you're, you're sitting, you're sitting pretty, you don't have to worry about anything, but if you got in February 8th, I, you know, sorry to say you, you're most likely down a lot on your investment. All right. Jumping back into the chat. I, we are in it for, ooh, where are you guys coming from? We have 1,400 people in here. Drop a like for me if you guys are finding value from this. And uh, we are going over a lot of different companies right now. And um, I think Brian Jung was in the chat. Awesome. Patrick Ma, are you related to Jack Ma? I'm pretty sure you get that all the time, man. Sorry, I had to say that. Um, GME, the thread for Reddit, GME is better thread. Um, I will definitely take a look at that, Patrick. Um, thanks. Uh, just not right now. Uh, we are, I'm in the chat. So recently, I mean, as of yesterday, I made I made it so that this chat was basically real time. There's no limiter on here. So whatever you guys are throwing in the chat, I'm seeing it in real time. AMC is definitely not going bankrupt. Don't worry about AMC going, not going, AMC is not going bankrupt. So um, one last thing that I kind of want to uh, touch upon is the cruise gang, cruise gang. So I've, I've heard some news about uh, CCLV, which is basically Carnival Cruise. Carnival Cruise pumps a little bit today, up uh, almost 2%. Um, over the last week, it's up 17%. Over the last month, it's up 37%. So anybody that's been, um, you know, invested over the last three months, you guys are sitting pretty. Um, obviously, if we look back to a year where it crashed, anybody that got in at $8, you guys are sitting pretty. But I think uh, CCLV just got another uh, line of credits. And uh, again, fair value sitting at $20. What is the price sitting at today? 26 so it's roughly uh, a little bit over twenty six, uh, a little bit over twenty dollars. So, if you guys are planning to get into CCL right now, most likely it's not a good time. Maybe wait for another pullback if there will be another one. Um, definitely not easy to get in right now. Uh, do not FOMO into this. Um, if anything, just dollar cost average. All right, so. Patrick Ma dropping some knowledge for us. Again, if you guys want some due diligence post, go into the subreddit of GME. John Miller asked a pretty good question here. Why do I look for market caps over a billion dollars? So one of the reasons why I do this is because to get a company to a valuation of a billion dollars is already going to be one of the most difficult things to do for any company in any industry. Okay. So once you reach a billion dollar market cap, you're most likely your company is going to be, you know, you've hit, you've hit it, right? That is the, that is the, you know, status that you want. You want to be a billion dollar company. So once you're able to hit that, you know, you might be a unicorn company, or, you know, a lot of tech companies are able to, to do this. And uh, once you hit it, you're most likely going to be known as like a, a more mature company, right? You hit that goal. You, you have that prestige of being a billion dollar company. 
anything below that is going to be a lot more volatile, a lot, a lot more volatile. So I like to pick winners, right? I like to pick the best of the best companies. And every now and then I do like speculation. So for, for most people, I think they should stick with companies that are, you know, the top of their class. And um, if you want to, you know, mess around with penny stocks, you can, but just make sure most of your portfolio is in uh, companies that are top of the class and, uh, you know, ETFs and index funds and stuff like that. Like a majority of my investments are in uh, ETFs that replicate the S&P 500. So I'm not too worried when um, crazy things happen in the markets. Um, I can buy the dips. Hopefully that answers a lot of questions for everybody. Um, bought the dip on Tesla finally. Yes, a lot of people have been waiting for this. Uh, me personally as well. Like my average cost, guys, my, let me see if I could uh, come in here. Let me show you my average cost, guys. So I've been holding Tesla for a long time. All right, my average cost for Tesla is $126, all right, $126. So once I saw the bull run for Tesla continue to just climb up and climb up, I couldn't get back in, but today was the day for me. And um, I got back in at, <clears throat> excuse me. I bought back into Tesla at basically seven, just under 700 bucks. So for anybody that got in to Tesla under 700, congratulations. Um, tomorrow will be another battle and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we will uh, do a little bit better. So we got a super chat here from uh, Andy. Thoughts on its beach body SPAC ticker symbol FRX. Dude, you guys are gonna give me a little bit of dyslexia with how much um, with how much ticker symbols you keep throwing at me. FRX. See, guys, I know it. I know you guys like the back of my hand. You guys are gonna throw companies that market cap under a billion dollars every time. Let's look back at the five-year chart. This uh, IPO'd at January 5th, 15th, and it came out at $11.24. and um, eleven dollars and Big run up on January 16th. I'm assuming a lot of people FOMO'd into this, jumped up 40%. If anything, wait for this to come back to a roughly around $11 and you can buy back in. You know, just, I'm not even looking at it. I don't even know what company this is. I just would not buy a company that just ran up 40%. I have no idea what this company does. But if a company jumps 40, 50% for no reason, I'm not going to jump into it without more due diligence and research. All right, I'm going to be answering some of these other donos and uh, we're going to call it a evening. I got to make some, some more content for everybody. So quick update. I'm building out a... A studio, a studio at my home. All right. So I'm going to have this studio and I'm going to have a live stream studio at home so I could give you guys more content, especially in the evening when I'm more free or early in the morning where I'm uh, also free. So I just spent like $4,000 making a studio at home. So I can't wait to premiere that for you. Most likely it's going to be done on Friday evening or uh, Sunday, uh, Saturday morning. All right. Last dono here. Love your content, Bruce. Love you, Channel Bruce. Can you help me uh, convince my friend Chico to pull out of GME already by telling to pull out, LOL. Please, Chico, pull out of GME. Uh, but, you know, I think a lot of people have diamond hands. I'm not personally, I, I still got diamond hands and I'm still holding on to GME for uh, whatever reason. We have more Joe Mama jokes here. And um, I think this is, this is it, guys. This is it. Thank you guys for tuning into the live stream. I dropped as much knowledge as I possibly could on you guys uh, during this time. <laughs> uh, so quick recap of everything that has gone on for this video. The market crashed a little bit today, right? It dropped. Uh, it was bloody red in the morning. I bought the dips here. I bought Tesla. I bought Alibaba and I bought Peloton. I bought the most of Peloton. I dropped $10,000 on Peloton. I dropped 6,000 on Tesla. And I dropped like uh, two to two to three thousand on Alibaba. If you guys got in early uh, this morning, congratulations! You guys are probably up a little bit today. 
Uh, tomorrow is another day, though, and uh, hopefully uh, it's a less volatile tomorrow. If it does drop again, you know, don't panic sell. Panic selling is something you guys should not do. Make sure you stick to your plan. We have uh, some more donos here. How about uh, Silvergate Capital? Uh, James, I will do a... Uh, I'm going to add this into my watch list, and I'll do a uh, update for next one. I'm going to end this live stream right now. Yo, for the haters, uh, we got another dono here. The CFO for GME just resigned today. What do you think? Uh, we'll see this tomorrow. So this is uh, bullish news for GME. We went over this in today's live stream as well. Uh, definitely um, GameStop is transforming into an e-commerce store. All, and, you know, Ryan Cohen, you know, he's no slouch. He knows what he's doing. He he brought uh, Chewy to a $40, $40 billion company valuation. So, you know, we're, we're thinking that's going to be... Uh, we're thinking he's going to do the same thing for GME. And that's where I'm going to leave it at. Um, you know, if you guys miss anything, jump back earlier into this live stream and um, view everything. But thank you guys for stopping by. Drop a like if you guys haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Bye.